What is up everybody? It's your man, I do a barber here. And in this video today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fade gray or salt and pepper hair in under 10 minutes. I know a lot of barbers out there actually struggle or have a hard time fading gray or salt and pepper hair, but I'm here to tell you, and in this video you will see that it's a lot easier than you think. So in this video, I'm gonna help you guys out, give you guys some little tips and tricks that I use in fading gray or salt and pepper hair, but without further ado, let's get into this video. You, I hope you guys are ready to learn. Grab your pen and pad, let's go. So I'm starting off with my five zero or five out blade, and I'm using this to bald out. And this is a mid ball fade, mind you. So I'm just going to the bottom of his box and making a straight line all the way across to the other side. Now, gray or salt and pepper hair can be difficult for some people to fade, but like I said in this video, I'm gonna make it a lot easier for you guys. So the one key, that could, because there are many to doing this, the one key in doing this is using the same system. Now, as you see, I'm balding out even tighter with the Bronze Series 7 shaver. But like I said, the, one of the keys is doing exactly everything the same as you normally would do not divert from your system just because this is salt and pepper hair or gray hair do everything the same because in life and in many things when it comes to success consistency is the key so if you change up your strategy you're going to have different results therefore it will not be the same and you will i guess unconsciously Feel like this is a lot more difficult than it really is so as you see here i take my one and a half and i'm actually going up two inches i'm basically clean clearing out bulk typically i would have went in with the oa one inch then one and a half one inch rather than uh what i just did here but i decided to just clear bulk because it was a quite heavy and a little bit long i didn't feel the oa would have been enough but now as you can see i went in with my oa here i'm actually creating another one inch guideline right underneath that one and a half so it's basically like i just did that in reverse but either way it's up to you so now i'm knocking down his hair on the top with the one and a half and you'll see i'll go back and knock it down a little bit more that's because he wanted to go a little bit lower but i'll give you another little tip for if you're doing the wavelength cut or knocking someone's hair down that wants to go with the grain. Here's a little trick. Sometimes it's better to start off bigger and work your way down because sometimes if you go in small, especially when you're talking about a higher length of hair than you normally would, you might chunk the hair. So a lot of times it's better to start off bigger and work your way down. So now I'm doing the crown. As you can see, you can see the whirl on his crown there. And all I'm doing is I'm following the pattern in which his hair grows. Just like if you were to fade a 360 waiver, that's the exact same thing you wanna do is go with the way the hair is actually going. Use a comb to figure out which way the hair and which way the direction of the hair growth pattern and go that way. A lot of times I'll start my way out and work my way into the world instead of being so aggressive. And it all, it all depends on how comfortable I feel. So as you see here, I put the one A blade on, which is the equivalent of a one guard and i'm knocking his hair down a little bit more because he looked in the mirror and he's like nah let me take a little bit more off so i just put the 1a blade on and that's what you see here so far fairly simple so now what i have here is the two blade i have this two blade and i'm taking it all the way up into his parietal ridge basically connecting the top with the sides and I'm doing the same thing here with that tube just connecting it with the sides now the thing is there's different types of gray hair and then there's salt and pepper hair very rarely you'll find a guy that has all gray hair it's very rare but there are guys out there like that and if you can fade it really well it looks really good but a lot of guys have this salt and pepper hair what happens is some people may have more salt than pepper or more pepper than salt. You have to know how to attack these. He actually has more pepper or not, sorry, excuse me, more salt than pepper. So I do have to be very attentive to that. So now I have the one and a half blade on going right underneath the two that I went into the Prado Ridge. As you see, I'm not going as high into the Prado Ridge, but if you look at this Prado Ridge on the left side there, you see there's a lot of salt, which makes that 
area look heavy. So what I have to do essentially is go up a little bit higher with the one and a half to give the illusion that it's a lot thinner than what it appears to be. It's just like doing a drop fade and someone has indentions or lumps where the where the fade drops below the occipital bone. A lot of barbers, we know this. A lot of times you have to go in a little bit lower into those shadows and create the illusion that the fade is there and there are no lumps. So right now I've got the one A blade on and I'm going right underneath where I was with the one and a half. And all that I'm doing is, for those of you that are wondering how do I know where to stop? How do I know how high to go? I just remember the zones. I just remember the zone that I was in before. And I basically work up right up into that, maybe about a half inch up into that. And I just come off the head. I don't flick out or anything like that. I just come off the head. It may not, you may not see that in the video because it's sped up a little bit, but that's what I'm doing. So now I have my one blade on, which is the equivalent of a pair of Andes Masters open. And I'm using my corners there with that one blade. So now I've got the triple out blade on and I'm basically using this to, to thin out that line that was created with the five out. So as you see here, you'll see that line disappear. Now here's another little key slash tip for fading gray hair. You want to have the appropriate size guidelines because what will happen is if you do not have the appropriate size guidelines, the fade will look not spread out. It will almost look like a chili bowl. So with gray or salt and pepper hair, you have to spread the blend out. Sometimes you may have to spread it out a little bit more than normal. And I noticed that's what I had to do here on his hair is I had just had to do it a little bit more than normal. But me knowing that in dealing with gray and salt and pepper hair, I knew what to expect and I knew how to counter attack what I was faced against here. So just remember that. And it's just like any fade, just like if you're talking about fading someone who has hair that's very coarse and has high hair density, and let's say the complexion of their skin, that's if they're getting a skin fade, their complexion of their skin is really light, you need to make sure you spread out the blend enough to make it look blended. Especially when they walk away from you, when they get 20, 30 feet away, up close, it may look faded but at a distance it will look like a chili bowl so you want to make the hair appear faded at from any angle from any distance no matter what so as you see i'm coming in with my slimline pro allies and i'm just basically knocking out some of the weight there that i created with the shaver it's pretty simple so now i'm gonna go into his edge up and he gets a pretty i would say conservative edge up it's, it's not crazy obviously there's no enhancements i'm not pushing it back i'm not trying to make it extra crispy and that's just to let you guys know that not everyone wants the sharpest hairline not everyone wants to not everyone wants to be super crispy some clients they just want a very conservative edge up and sometimes you'll encounter clients that don't want an edge up at all i've seen this before so just be mindful of that when you're doing edge ups you see it, it's a nice edge up very nice edge up it's nice and clean it's not exaggerated so now i'm coming in with my eight inch shears and i'm just basically cleaning up those loose hairs you could do this with a pair of trimmers or a pair of adjustables or a five out blade three out blade whatever and just go over and coast over the top of the hair i just chose to use the shears because i kind of like the way the shears look as far as the way it grows back and just the way it looks it's this is my preference. Now you could use some nine inch or 10 inch shears. I've seen people use those, the ones that have curves or the Filipino shears. I like these eight inches. They're not heavy and they're not big, but this is the cut. So let me know what you guys think. If the, any of these tips were helpful for you, leave a comment in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe this video. I have plenty of bar great barbering content on this channel. So browse the channel. I'm gonna get out of here. It's your man, I do a signing out. I will holler.